Hi everyone, thanks for being here. I'm Marshall Cox. I'm a PhD candidate here in Intellectual Engineering at Columbia University, and I want to share with you a few of my thoughts on simplicity, abstraction, and innovation. And I want to start by telling you a story. This is the story of James Page and the Page Compositor. Uh, James lived in the 18, 1800s, and uh, this is the era of the printing press, and he realized, among other people, that the first person to automate the process of typesetting for printing presses is going to make a lot of money. So he set out to invent this machine, and he invented one of the most amazing machines ever created, particularly at this time. It was the most complex machine ever made. It had 18,000 different parts, 18,000 separate homemade steel parts that James Page made himself and assembled into a machine that not only was the fastest typesetter, faster than any human, faster than any other machine, it also had auto-correction, it had self-aligning, and it was also self-destructing. And that's because when you have something with 18,000 parts, it's inevitable that one of those parts is going to break. And in the case of, the comp of this compositor, it broke all the time, and it would take about three months to fix because you have 18,000 places to look. As an aside, it was also one of the most complex patents ever filed. That's 206 pages of patent drums. It was known as the whale in the, in the patent office. Uh, one patent examiner died during the examination. And, <laughs> And two people actually went insane, and their insanity was directly attributed to the sheer intellectual complexity of this patent. <coughs> and sadly, it was also a total and complete commercial failure. And that's pretty much attributed to the fact that it was so complex. It was so complex that it could not only, it not only could not work for more than five minutes, but even if they had fixed that problem, it was so complex it would have cost an astronomical sum and no one would have ever bought it. And so this is a picture of the last copy of this in a museum. Uh, so much money had been spent on this machine, and, and obviously it was a pretty big failure, that it was a big media sensation. And this is a still image from the movie The Adventures of Mark Twain. You can see them lampooning the page compositor here with these crazy arms. And it was in The Adventures of Mark Twain because Mark Twain invested in and lost everything he had, all his, his proceeds from Huckleberry Finn on, on this venture. And he had some pretty uh, colorful things to say. This is an amazing Mark Twain quote. You have to read this. Um, Mark Twain lost everything, spent the rest of his life trying to get out of debt because of this, and despite that fact, he's still in the same document, the same autobiography, had something pretty amazing to say about Page. And I picked this up for two reasons. First of all, my middle name is Page, and I'm actually a uh, relative of James Lee Page, so I don't want to just throw him under the bus. But uh, the second reason, the big reason is that people thought he was a genius. He was a genius. Mark Twain said that in all the ages, he has no peer in terms of his prowess with steel and engineering. And that's important to note because no matter how good you are at something, you will fail if that project is too complex, and complexity kills good ideas. <laughs> so now I want to tell you about something that I'm working on and how simplicity plays into that. We're working on something called Radiator Labs, and I can kind of see you. Who here has ever lived in an apartment with radiator heat? A lot of us, I assume. We're, we're all, a lot of us live in Columbia, so that's the case. How many of you who have lived in an apartment with radiator heat had to open your window in the middle of the winter because it was too hot? It should be almost all of us. It's because steam heat is, has a big problem. It's, it's really hard to keep every apartment in steam heat building at the same temperature, and so they heat the coldest apartment to the lowest temperature that you're allowed to, and then everybody else is overheated. New York City wastes about a billion dollars a year, just New York City, in overheating wastes associated with this. I lived in a particularly bad apartment three years ago at Columbia, but don't tell them I said that. Um, this is a, a temperature versus time scale of, of what my apartment was like, and this does not do justice to how, how hot it got. It, would routinely get to 85 degrees. It was an unmitigated hellhole. And one day, I just couldn't live with it anymore, and I banded together with a couple of my colleagues to figure out a way to fix this. And we're all engineers, we're, we're pretty capable people, but we have no idea, we're not gonna you know, get into the steam system of a Columbia building, so we thought differently about it, and we, we came up with a solution that was shockingly easy. And that idea was to basically wrap the radiator in a blanket, the room should get cold then, right? And then we attached a fan to that enclosure and pulled heat out when, when the room actually called for it. And we built it, and we installed it, and it actually worked. It was amazing. My room was a paradise after I built this thing. And just consider what went into it. It was shockingly simple, three parts. Um, by the way, we've since gotten better components, but the first version had glorified bubble wrap as the insulation. We had a fan you could buy at Radio Shack, and there was one actual hard part, one part of complexity that we had to deal with, which was we needed something that could sense temperature and then drive the fan based on that temperature, and that was hard. And even though I'm an electrical engineer, it would have taken me a bunch of time to do that, I might not have had not something called the Arduino existed. Arduino is, uh, if you don't know what it is, you should research it, it's, it's an amazing piece of hardware. Super easy to use. What it did is it took all the complexity of that part of the project and made it so simple for me. This process is called abstraction. Abstraction makes complex things easy, so when the Arduino did this for me, 
The process that I had to go through to build this was three very simple things, and I was able to build this prototype in one night. As another aside, people like this idea. And I say this because simplicity is also compelling. Uh, this year we won the MIT Clean Energy Prize, and we're on the, the New York Green Tech 50, which is really amazing. And I think one of the big components that got us there is the fact that this idea is so simple, so easy to understand, and when someone sees it, they say, my God, how come I didn't think of that? I think it can't be overstated how much of, a, of an importance that played in the role of us, of us getting, having so much support. So I want to finish up just with a conclusion, try to, oops, try to tell you, uh-oh, that was a big finish. <laughs> try to tell you, like, what I'm trying to tell you here, which is that complex problems have simple solutions, and that's an obvious statement. But it's not always obvious when you're working on a particular problem. James Page developed the compositor to basically mimic the motions of a human operator typesetting. And that's because that's what, you know, everyone, no one had done anything else. And that's an extremely hard thing to try to recreate. The competitive technology, the linotype that actually beat him and, and you know, sold the owner, the person who developed it, made millions, um, it threw away that convention. It, it found a new, simpler, and maybe less intuitive way of, of typesetting, and it worked really well. Similarly in Steam, there are systems out there that try to address the overheating issue, but they're used to dealing with steam, and so these systems try to control how much steam gets to the radiator, and that's really hard to do. Steam is a 100 degrees Celsius gas. It's a two-phase heating problem. It's really complicated. It's so much easier to control air. And finally, complexity is constantly being abstracted out. The Arduino is a great example of this. But people are always developing things that make really hard to do things really easy. And that's really good news, because it means that despite the fact that we see our big problems today as extremely complex, there are ways that we can all still take place in the innovation of the solutions. Thanks a lot.